There was definitely a lot of talk about Fisker going on, and you know what? I'm sick of the talking. I wanted to go experience the Fisker Ocean myself in person, see if it's all that it's hyped up to be, or if people are too critical on it. Wanted to develop my own opinion by seeing one and driving one myself. Let's check it out. Yeah, no, 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 no. There's too many kids. <laughs> what All do you right. think? The software is a little slow. I can pick up on right away. This wiggles a bit, but uh. How do you open it? I'm trying to figure that out. Actually. This I think is broken. Yeah, that doesn't look finished. Yeah, I don't think that's right. We got Chi chargers though. That's a good cool. place for them. And then this is like theater mode. So the UI is optimized for both. Portrait and landscape, I guess. You can do maps this way, yeah. What's around. the max range on this? This one, I think, is 360 miles. Well, that's pretty good. Pretty big battery. But if I hold this down... Ooh. My knee bump. 11 oh, pounds. This one, this one looks bigger than the other one. It does look bigger. Yeah, I could totally put... It will not go bad. Okay. It's broken. All right, so we love eating lunch in the car, so we need something like this, which is Ooh. just like a plane. You get a little food tray, although this does not look that big, but you could at least put your drink and maybe your The burger. sound of quality. Yes, high quality. <laughs> this would be really convenient in the yeah. Tesla. What is that? There's like a guy rock climbing. Oh, wow. Easter eggs. I love <laughs> the little design Easter eggs. There's also seagulls and a surfer dude on the door handles, as well as another surfer dude riding the defroster waves. The little line turns into waves and even fish scales embedded into the headlight design. So if you like Easter eggs, this is the car. We also have a storage space down here underneath. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, I can stick my hand through. Can you see my yep. hand? Yep, it goes Ooh. all the way through. Wireless chargers and then stuff back here. This reminds me so much of a plane. Yeah. <laughs> like a plane made by Boeing. Luis, yes. what are your thoughts on the Fisker Ocean? Um, meh. Meh? <laughs> <laughs> What's so meh about it? No, I mean, it's fine. It's a car. I'm just not super impressed, but... Yeah, but there's solar. I liked it when it flipped. Like yeah, you can hold it Hollywood down. mode. Oh, yeah. Now we can watch movies. Yeah, I would just leave it like that all the time, except he told us that this only... See, why is there a navigation option in right. landscape you can if only use it in when you put it in drive, it switches back yeah. to... Well, I feel like that would break when there's moving mm. parts like that over time. These seats are definitely not ventilated though because there's no Seed. holes. Are they? No, that's what that means, right? That's that's heating. I'm pretty sure that's heated seats. Oh no, those those are arrows. They're arrows, so I'm hmm. confused. Maybe it's Press the brake pedal. Oh. Wait, are we supposed to be doing this? They didn't uh, design a showroom mode. That? That's orange. Okay. Heat. Yeah, that's all it does. Uh, okay. They just use no arrows air. for some reason. Oh, okay. So that's how you change the direction. The airflow. Interesting, because I can still on. touch the vents. Yours aren't on. There, do you feel it now? No. There's a lot going on here. So many layers. There were a lot of choices. Textures and looks like there's some patterns there. I like the styling. And I like the storage. Yeah. I love practicality when we're doing long road trips we need lots of storage and places to put. That's a decent place for stuff. wireless charging. But oh. yeah, look, you've got screen here. Yeah. Screen here, screen there, and, and screen here. And a screen in the back center console. Did right. You, yeah, uh, in the middle seat. It yeah. was off. The but cup holders, though, suck. They won't even fit my regular size water yeah, bottle. Yeah, you have a pretty standard water bottle, yeah. and it wasn't fitting in there. You might so have to wait, live with that. Was this just the arm? Oh, okay. Yeah. Because it was broken in the other one. Yeah, it didn't what, last What is this long. hole for? This is broken, too. Stick something in? Coins, maybe? Oh, yeah, coin slot, maybe. Oh, there's <laughs> a lot of buttons. Yeah. A lot going on. Lock, unlock, mirrors. I like that California mode. Yeah. Where all the windows, all the windows drop down. This, the, uh, he called it the sea salt interior. I love this interior much more than the standard one. All the lines. Like a light gray. Gradient and the Alcantara. I'm just a fan of lighter interiors in general. But this gets in the way. I don't know why this needs to be so forward. Well, because when you are oh, in this mode, switch. it has to be at the hmm. bottom. And then you have screen on screen. Okay. This just feels like something it's, it's going to break. You can but. see the trash pile in the rear. <laughs> it was funny when you were uh, behind the car, I could see your face. Like, oh, get really can? close to the camera. You want me to do that again? Sure. <laughs> there he is. 
<laughs> oh, that's interesting. It has little, uh, what are those called? Parking lights? Oh, yeah, and, uh, the pump lights. Yeah, both pump lights. You got a privacy shelf in here. Yeah, yeah. Load floor with sub trunk space underneath. Uh -huh. 120 volt outlet right over here. Oh, that's 1600 watts. That's a lot. I want that. See if at all else you got solar and a way to pull from it. Okay, wow. let me put my water in there for scale. Yeah, there you go. Go for it, guys. But this is no longer accurate, right? No, not okay. accurate anymore. So how much gotcha. is this car now if we wanted to buy it today? $37,499. Oh, that's yeah. really good. That's yeah. less than what we paid. 360 miles. That's pretty up there. We're in the Fisker Ocean One Launch Edition, and we're going to be taking it on a little bit of a test drive. So this is rocking OS 2.0. We have a hold capable now, so the vehicle won't roll around without us. We have regen set to high and boost mode activated. So. We should be ready to launch one of our 500 attempts. Okay. Yeah, that regen is not super strong. <laughs> I'm gonna find an People opening here. Oh yeah, thank you. And it's given me lots of heads up. I probably could have made it, but all right. Ooh, really springy. Okay, first impressions are the dash for me compared to my Model 3 is a little bit higher up. Thankfully, there is a bumper camera so if we need to see things around us oh there's rear there's 3d surround that works while we're in motion so that increases our visibility window a little bit do you know if there's a way to do the bumper camera while you're driving? not while you're driving oh, okay gotcha Got oh you're rolling back oh i am yeah right. oh wow. <laughs> i did no not. one pedal driving okay, okay it does see the stoplight ahead of us so that's pretty nifty yeah there's no one pedal driving so we actually started rolling back there a little bit that takes some getting used to one thing that i'm missing that would be handy is if i could signal and see my blind spot i think that's a really handy feature we've got a decent sized mirror here for there right. we go 71 percent see even if it's a tiny amount of energy i love that okay you ready hun all right we're gonna do a launch so prepare yourself what? <laughs> <laughs> you feel oh that? my gosh. Yeah, okay. Roller coaster feeling. Oh, oh yeah. I hate that. The bumps on the road make the pedal a little touchy. That spin of the wheel when we launched. <laughs> yeah. do, they, do you think there's a little bit of a performance feel to it? Yeah. Where it's like, ooh. It's really moving, but there's also a little bit of, oh God, is the car going to be Is okay? the car going to be yeah. all right? <laughs> <laughs> it's cool that they can rotate this. I've gotten so used to landscape in so many cars that I just feel like this is directing your eyes further and further downwards. Doesn't it's, it twist? It does, but not in drive. Oh. They're like, you can do Hollywood mode for, for movies and shows and stuff if you want to watch content, but it's cool to have a screen up here. These visuals aren't giving you that much data, so I would... I would put that here so the maps could be higher, mm. personally, that's just me. Someone might prefer this. Do you know the weight of this car? Her okay. weight is 5,300. Wow, okay, so it's yeah. it's up there. The handling feels pretty decent to me. Like, it doesn't feel tight. It doesn't feel like I'm having to try really hard to move it around. Like, it feels nimble. Let's try Earth. I was gonna say it felt a little springy. See, I'm used to chill mode most of the time. But I really do like the fact that if you keep it on earth mode, obviously if you're not in cold weather, you're yeah. not going up too many hills, it'll get pretty close to 360. Wow. I think that tends to happen whenever they rely on the big battery instead of aero, you know, mm -hmm. savings. Because yeah. with aero savings, you have all of these variables that you can't account for. Mm -hmm. Like the speed changes your efficiency drastically, and then the temperature, and then Mm -hmm. crosswinds. Whereas if it's like, nope, we just have a big battery, that's how we get the range, then you're it's not... A, it's a much more reliable source. Yeah. Right now, at least, this model is about, you said, 37,000? 37, 37,500. For a car with a battery pack that's 113 <laughs> kilowatt yeah. hours. For 37, that's unheard of. That's pretty insane mm -hmm. value. Even if you're worried about service or software support long term, that battery pack in itself might <laughs> might hold its value. I mean, I can't predict what the collector's market will be like, but this is a new a new challenge for, you know, the EV startup space to figure out. It's like, okay, if the if the long-term viability of the company is up for debate, what does that make the software look like? I'm genuinely curious. I want to see what software support looks like and it just goes untouched for, you know, 
plug one time. Yeah, open sourcing would be a great announcement. They just said, we're going to give you all the keys to the kingdom. <laughs> I think they would clear inventory pretty quick if they knew that there was going to be a little built-in support network. So what exactly went wrong here with the Fisker Ocean? Well, if I'm looking at it and trying to come up with my own conclusion, I think this is what happens when you try to get to market too fast. There was obviously some decent ideas here. It's a nice-ish SUV with a lot of range and was trying to have a pretty large emphasis on software, but didn't have the great software to kind of back it up. And I think a lot of this comes down to the fact that Henrik Fisker was a design guy, so he paid a lot of attention to little design cues, and they probably spent several years coming up with the design of the exterior and interior, but they went public likely way too fast, and there was all this pressure from investors and shareholders to deliver. Get the product out there. Don't be late. Don't push back your timelines because you said you gotta deliver by a certain time, so please deliver on time unlike everybody else, and what happens when you kind of rush to market like this is the build quality suffers because your engineering team doesn't have enough time to figure out how to calibrate the assembly process and your software developers weren't able to stick the landing even though this was running the latest most up-to-date version of Ocean OS or whatever they call it it was still very jumpy very laggy it didn't feel very optimized honestly I'm struggling to figure out how it was substantially worse than what it is currently because of how especially clunky it is and you know some people are willing to put up with that but I just think for a car that didn't put much emphasis into the operating system, you know, not being able to do over-the-air updates with the first vehicles that came out of the factory, it should have been a lot more analog. I think they shouldn't have a rotating display and so many screens dependent on having a really solid software team if you weren't going to have a really solid software team. And solar really doesn't make that much sense if you're going to do it in such a small capacity like they did on the ocean. And of course, it's not the most efficient vehicle in the world, which is a key cornerstone to making sure that solar charging is actually practical on a vehicle. So I absolutely think that if Fisker agreed to open source the software and the operating system and say, we're going to hand over the keys to the OS to the community and, and say, whoever's left to hold on to these vehicles and test them in the long run, we're going to let them control the OS and make it whatever they want to make it. That would definitely make these vehicles a pretty good bargain, in my opinion. I mean, even if you're a EV enthusiast, who knows how to jerry-rig batteries and maybe turn them into home storage. I would say that the Ocean's honestly kind of impressive value for $37,000 getting 113 kilowatt hours. That's going to be very hard to do anywhere else in the industry. And while they were boasting about the Fisker Sport costing about $25,000, I asked about them and I literally can't find them anywhere. I'm not exactly convinced that they ever built sport models, but they loved bragging about them now starting at $25,000, but but who knows, if you can find one of these things for 25 grand, that's a pretty incredible value considering the range that they offer, and I'd be willing to put up with a lot of software bugginess for a big SUV with this much storage space that's this fast, and for that low a price, it would be pretty hard to beat, but again, this is just going to be another fascinating chapter in EV history, and an important lesson, I hope, for all EV startups, that you absolutely can rush to market far too fast, and sometimes it's production and delivering to customers that actually kills you. So try to learn from what Fisker has done here with the ocean and try to improve on that for all aspiring startups out there. Don't rely on ginormous battery packs. And if you're gonna charge, you know, $60,000, $70,000 for a car, you absolutely have to get build quality and software on top notch. And we were still seeing issues with the key fob on these latest generation oceans. But am I wrong? Feel free to disagree with me down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton as does just watching these videos so thanks again have an excellent rest of your day